Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Forrest Wynn, Kentucky State University State Specialist for Extension Aquatics. And today we're going to talk about something I know you probably get a lot of calls saying, my pond is green, what do I do? Unlike any other problem, identifying aquatic plants uh, properly or, or algae in some cases is, is really critical to trying to figure out a management or control program. Water meal is actually the world's smallest vascular plant, uh, and it feels kind of like sesame seeds or gritty when, between your fingers. Uh, we'll often see this uh, in the warmth of the summer, mid to late summer, early fall. And this growth is related somewhat to duckweeds, but it, it is very persistent. Uh, and it is probably the hardest plant we have to control. Um, the best thing you can do, if possible, is to limit the, the source of nutrient coming into the pond or lake, um, whether it's manures, septic, lawn fertilizers, this sort of stuff. Um, it's best, to, if you can, to basically starve this plant out, because as long as the nutrient supply is there, and these plants, like duckweeds, extract the nutrients right out of the water column, uh, you're going to be basically combating these plants. So, so they're quite difficult to control. There are some chemicals out there. Unfortunately, they're they're expensive. Uh, the the systemic chemicals, such as fluoridone, uh, sold under white cap, Avast, uh, Sonar, quite expensive, and and they require a, at least a thirty day retention time in the pond. So uh, during periods of heavy rains, when our watershed ponds, the water is moving through there, and we don't have great retention time. This would, this would be problematic. We have one contact herbicide of flumioxazin sold under the brand name of Clipper and others, uh, which is fast acting, but sensitive to high pH. So these are nuanced treatments. Uh, you, you have to know what you're doing and you have to uh, be sure you want to get the retention time and, and that the, uh, the chemical is appropriate for the targeted plant. If you can take a more holistic approach, buffer strips around your pond, it's mostly phosphorus that gets into the water that triggers the growth of aquatic plants and algae. So have your soils tested. Make sure you're not over fertilizing either in a lawn or an agricultural type of scenario, and it will save you money and, and, and trouble in the long run in, in controlling your pond plants. Duckweed is a, a little leaf, maybe the size of a pencil eraser or a little smaller, and it's got tiny root hanging down, roots hanging down below the leaves uh, that you can see. And they're, they're probably only a quarter or half inch long, but it is a floating plant and extracting via its roots nutrients right out of the water column. Is it carried by ducks? I guess it could be uh, carried um, from one source of, of, of water bot to another on the feathers of birds. If there's not enough nutrient in the water to, to sustain the growth, even if it gets in there, it probably won't last very long. But if there's enough phosphorus and some nitrogen in that water uh, to feed this plant, it'll it'll stick around. And, and it mul these plants multiply very quickly. They're hard to control in yep. warm water due to that. You want to check it as you would a garden. Now, what about some of these other weeds that we can actually see out of the pond? Control is is the the exact word. You know, you don't want to eradicate so much. I mean, it, everybody has seen the uh, seed heads of a cattail and they blow on the wind. When you build a, a new pond, it's just a matter of time before cattails and black willows and other uh, sedges, as you mentioned, start moving in. A little bit of this growth is actually attractive. I would tell folks to keep woody vegetation off their dam. But you can pretty much the rest of the pond let grow around it what you want to. Typically for things like uh, willows, um, cattails, uh, your, your various rushes and sedges, with new growth coming up, I would I would go ahead and treat with glyphosate, uh, uh, an aquatic registered glyphosate with a non-ionic surfactant, a non-detergent surfactant, which is safe to use in aquatic environments, and also legal is a pretty good approach. Now, if you let this stuff get too thick, you might have to make rep repeated applications. If you get on it very early, you can remove remove this stuff manually. But um, something like cattails have long tubers underneath the mud, and it's not long before they become impossible to remove by hand. Have stuff growing where you want it and not so much where you don't, because th this type of growth will encircle a pond over years. And uh, you'll have a hard time gaining access and then regaining control of it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you.